Welcome. Thanks for joining the first Rise and Resiliency gathering that we're having uh, over the next three weeks. I'm really so honored to be hosting Dr. Kate Siner. She's been a longtime friend and mentor and um, somebody who I know many of us are leaning into during recent events with coronavirus. And um, so grateful that, uh, that we get to drop in to her transmission and medicine. And my name is Aria, if you don't know me. Um, really, uh, really happy to, um, yeah, see, see familiar faces and a lot of new faces too. So I'd love to kick us off with a grounding together. Mm. We can take a minute just to take a couple of breaths together to come inward and uh, I'll, I'll just guide us through for a couple minutes together, allowing our eyes to lower if you wish to have them closed or you can have them resting gently open. And just beginning to notice the flow of your breath in this moment, what it's like right now. Noticing what it would be like to allow your breath to become a little bit slower and a little bit deeper. Inhaling deeply, slowly, and finding the release of the exhale, slowly letting everything go. And breathing in this way, I welcome us all to bring our awareness towards our hearts. So just noticing what it's like in the space of your physical heart in this moment. Connecting your breath to your heart. Inhaling into this heart space and exhaling from here. And then from this space, despite everything going on in the world, how this virus is hitting us in the global sense as well as quite personally in many ways, I invite us to collectively see what it might be like to find one thing in your life that you can feel grateful for in this moment. Maybe it's a person or a pet that you're locked in with or a place. Finding one thing that you feel appreciation for, that you feel gratitude for. And in this moment, seeing what it might be like to allow yourself to feel a little bit of that gratitude in your body. So inviting, inviting the experience, the felt sense of appreciation in your physical body as you continue to breathe slowly and deeply into the space of the heart. And just taking a couple more breaths here in this way together. And then only as you feel ready, beginning to come back 
with eyes open if they've been lowered. Thank you. So, uh, once again, introduce myself. My name is Aria. And this is uh, coming together in a virtual way, a, a short series for the next three weeks. This is our first call gathering in this way. And um, really the intention is that we can um, learn right now that there's some spaciousness and um, some opening to uh, build some skills while we're all sitting at home. <laughs> and um, bring you know a little bit of hope to um, to this moment that is very challenging in in many ways um, i was uh, riding riding some waves of emotion this morning because my grandmother is in the hospital um, from complications from a surgery she had a couple of weeks ago and she does not have coronavirus fortunately for that um, but um, she's in pretty rough shape and the hospital is completely closed to visitors. So um, there are so many ways that this is impacting our lives right now. And for me, um, in this moment, just letting myself be with the, the sadness of the separation that I can't um, be there to hold her hand. And um, I know, I know so many people have versions of this sort of a thing affecting them right now. And so really so much gratitude to, to see um, us together in this way. Thanks for being here. And um, as I said earlier, um, Kate Siner, Dr. Kate is um, an amazing person, <laughs> woman in the world, just um, such, a, such a steady force for love. And um, I really have, there's no, no words that exist in, in English anyway to describe um, how uh, dear she is to me. So um, really, and I know, I know a few of you here uh, uh, know her as well and, and feel the same. So um, if she's new to you, super, super happy that you get to um, uh, be in this space with, with her today. So I'll let you kind of kick off. From here, Kate. Thank you. Thank you, Aria. So, good morning or afternoon, everyone. Uh, a few things that have come forward as a way to start, um, and one is the the tenderness that Aria just shared. So that um, some of what I'm going to share today is how we can help to strengthen ourselves, how we can help to hold ourselves and each other as we move through this time. Um, but that doesn't leave out tenderness. That doesn't leave out vulnerability. It's not strength so that then we don't have the other. It's inclusive. And um, to recognize that tenderness, vulnerability, and um, sometimes the difficulty that comes with everything that we're going through is not a, the part of, to get rid of, it's not the problem. Um, and we've, we're supposed to be having the other stuff if we've really got it together, but that it really is the part of the whole package. Um, that, is, that is wholeness, that is coming into truth, that is coming into a, a much more real way of being. So know that wherever you find yourself in whatever moment, and I personally have been finding quite a large stretch between the stronger parts of me and the more vulnerable parts of me. Um, they, it's the continuum seems very long. And, um, and, uh, but no matter where you find yourself in this, that there is, uh, uh, that, it, that, it, that it's, all, it's all part, it's all, it's all, it's all welcome. It's all needed. It all is all part of the healing process and uh, the strengthening process and the movement through. And then secondly, um, it's about uh, what's, what's here for me is about orientation. 
So I often think about things like this, presentations, and where there's information to be conveyed. There's always a little bit of an awkwardness to it for me because there is a, a, there's a disconnect, there's a disembodiment that happens or there's a disconnect that happens for me in that it, it feels like the information is being planted into a space where there isn't necessarily the, there isn't necessarily the openness or the receptivity to it. And so this is something that I've struggled with around communication in, in, um, in, my, in my time. And so uh, part of what I'd like to start with here is asking, and this actually builds into, I'll talk about it more, this builds into what we're going to be looking at today. Because we're, we're in um, a time where new ways of being and new skills are being called forward. It's like this, some of the, it's not so much, it's not like this was an end and then this is now, but, but there is a, a dramatic or a sort of a, a, a more significant, a more significant shift that's happening in this moment. It's requiring new orientation and new skills. And so part of what's here, like I said, that I'll get to afterwards is a little bit about um, just adjusting and orienting in a new, in a new way. So I ask you, if you're willing, to call in your reason for being here inside, inside of yourself. And, and that, that is helping to orient me. And that is also how we're helping to orient each other during this time. And that the calling in comes in a, a couple different ways. So what we have become more and more familiar with as we switched from the sort of the, the brain matter and we've switched to the heart, we've become more and more familiar with feeling that call, feeling that intention in our heart. There's also a place for it in the expanded mind. So this is not the narrow mind, this is the expanded mind. And that is, a, that is an additional skill to be bringing in at this time the intention, the feeling in the heart, and also the calling in through the expanded mind. So it's getting a little bit deep, but what I'm asking in this moment is to just bring in uh, your purpose, your reason for being here to help me be able to hear you and be able to speak to you. Thank you. The resonance, resonance is, is a key, right? Learning in all of this, knowing that in, in any given moment, we're going to, each one of us is going to falter. And in groups of people, there will be people who will be kind of struggling that remembering to build the resonance, to build the connectedness is part of what I um, am gonna be talking about in my first point, which is um, about being centered and aligned. So how do we learn to be more centered and more aligned during this time? I remember back in, you know, I guess it was like the 90s and the, um, I was starting to come into my more, you know, spiritual new age stuff and moved to the West Coast. I got, you know, there, were, there was new language available that wasn't available to me um, prior to that. And people were talking about grounding. And I was just like, oh, grounding, like, like, wow. Grounding, grounding, you know, like, I get it, you know, the word makes sense, you know, like, I, like, I understand this, like, I get the practice, okay, be a tree, be a tree, you know, and, 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 but I didn't really fully understand what was meant by grounding. I was so not grounded that the concept of grounding was really actually challenging for me to grasp. And um, so it's a very simple thing that once you understand grounding, right? And if anybody's had this shared experience or something like this, once you understand grounding, then it's just like, oh, right, this is just a part of my, like my, my mechanics. 
this is just how I am. This is how I'm made. This is what, I, you know, and, and then it just becomes like, oh, grounding, right? Like, this is what I do in order to bring up that system. It's just like the airplane puts down its landing gear. You know, they, they, it's like we, you know, can put down our roots and come into a place of grounding. So similarly um, is, is alignment. So alignment is a tool for, for uh, that, that is like a, na it's a natural mechanism inside of us that we are to varying degrees familiar with. with. And so the, we will can learn over time how to be more and more aligned or centered or connected. And that this can be a, like a, a growing experience and understanding because like be a study inside of itself. So similarly to what I just asked you to do in coming into your own why am I here place, holding that, you're helping, you know, you're coming into a greater alignment inside yourself. And there's also coming into you're helping me with more of an alignment inside of myself so that we can get deeper into the material that we're here to get into, that I can speak more clearly and more directly, that you can receive more clearly and directly. So as we start to work on this inner alignment, we remember that you know, sometimes our only job in turmoil is to find our own inner alignment or our first job inside of turmoil is to find that place so that then immediately we're becoming part of the solution and immediately we're becoming more open to our guidance so um i like to call alignment for myself it's it's either the deepest or highest point of connection that I have. That, that's how I like to define it. So for me, it has a really, um, it, it, it's like a deep, uh, uh, it's like a power cord. It's like a, a deep power cord. So um, the, there's different ways to come into a, um, a come into more alignment. Okay. And one of the things that we sometimes need in order to step into this is, is to clear some space. Hang on just one second. So one of the things that is sometimes needed in order to, to do this is to clear more space. So this actually makes space for connection. It's like, it's like we can't get through the turbulence. For example, you know, one of the things that's happened in this shift in, in, this, in this time is that a certain type of sort of distraction, fr frenetic energy has fallen out of the system, like has fallen out of the, the environment. And, and because of that, that's actually created a spaciousness for certain types of deep connection. It's actually a really powerful thing. Now, of course, we've also had an increase of an, another type of, of or, or other types of energies that might be a little distracting or disorienting or challenging to deal with. But it, it's like through that shift, it, it, it becomes more apparent like how this space clearing is so helpful, how it provides us, there is, um, how it provides us with this, um, uh, this deeper point of connection. So uh, the, the tools that you have for clearing can be very helpful at this time. The uh, other tools that are used for alignment are um, prayer or mantra. So a lot of times when people think of prayer, they think of like an asking for, please help me with, and they think of it in terms of a message going out for then something to be received. There's some truth there. But one of the, one of the important components of prayer that's in 
alignment with alignment is that there is a um through the act of prayer through the 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 speaking of the words that that actually brings through a force of connectedness and brings through a force of alignment so it is the the it is that is the act not so much as in the request and then the waiting although that's powerful it's the act itself that calls in a particular energy or frequency that helps us come into right relationship. That's one of the things that is so powerful about prayer. Um, along with that, uh, daily practice. So finding something to do on a regular and consistent basis that brings you into that connected an aligned place that can be prayer, it can be a mantra, it can be dance, it can be creativity, it can be a walk in nature, it can be all of those things. So one of the things that I find is repeatedly true is that the greatest wisdom has been shared over and over and over again throughout time. And that there it, it is that it is in the uh, adjusting or the adaptation of this this wisdom to the current moment that is like the most powerful, the most innovative, the most new, the most catalytic. But that the wisdom, if we turn back, has been passed down generation after generation. This is another form of alignment that time and time again, we've gone through this life process and people who have contemplated the life process and have dove into the depths of their own hearts and the depths of life have come forward with some of the same answers. And those answers often are very simple. and that's that's the beauty of them and and we don't need to complicate them it's, it's actually beneficial for us to remember to practice them and to continue that chain of wisdom like in prayer and mantra and daily practice So the first step is about coming into right relationship with ourself, right relationship with the universe, right relationship, period. And then secondly, is that, you know, I, I, I'm not a fan of spiritual bypassing. I, I don't believe that we simply pray our way out of challenging situations. I believe that alignment and a good orientation is a great place to start with any kind of thought or any kind of action. And that the, um, but that in times where there's a lot going on, any kind of crisis inside of our life and with our family, in our world, in our community, anything that's happening that's destructive or challenging or requires uh, our brain, our thinking, our creative solutions, in order to move through doesn't just get solved in the realm of of prayer and intention um, everybody has their own place and their own points of emphasis inside of that meaning some people will hold down more prayerful space and some people will hold down more active space but it's uh for many of us it's a more of a combination so my second step is about thinking constructively. And th this is about looking less at the problem and more into the areas of solution. Again, this is not a blindness. We don't turn our eyes and say, oh, I don't want to look at the problem. If I'm looking at the problem, I'm thinking negatively, and that negative thinking is going to influence my alignment, and then everything's going to be off. That's, that's fear. 
you know, the, 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 uh, it's that you see the problem, the problem is present, but you also look outside the problem because more than the problem is present. So it's in addition to, and that's where it's like outside the problem when we're greater than the problem, when we can see it from a vantage point or we can look outside of it. This is when we start to see the potentials for new solutions. Now, some of what makes constructive thinking constructive is uh, its ability to take into consideration as much as possible. So it's as inclusive as possible. It takes in as many factors as possible. This is saying if you take in every factor, like you, 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 you can't even think anymore. So if you're, if you, there, there's a place where like everything is going to be like a little bit smaller than every opportunity and, or every option, but that there is a comprehensive, there's a wholeness, there's a desire to expand as much as possible to look at all of the different components that are, that are at play. And there's a sensitivity to reactivity or the type of exclusiveness that comes from fear. So when, when there's that sensitivity, we can recognize like, oh, okay, like that's where I put my blinder up and I don't see opportunity. The, uh, additionally, with, with thinking constructively, there's, there's a, couple more, a couple more points I want to make. So part of creation of something new, like I was saying, open your mind, expand to include as much as possible, right? One, one premise. The other thing is that in order to create anything, we're actually making choices about, like there's an exclusionary process that goes on in that. So in other words, if I'm choosing to paint a canvas, it's like, and I'm painting with certain colors, I'm excluding certain other colors. And so we can be deliberate about this process, which might mean that, you know, I'm going to be really deliberate in my creations at this time, as I'm thinking constructively about solutions, I'm going to be really deliberate at this time to exclude certain elements, meaning I'm going to try to eliminate how fear influences me as I'm creating. Or I'm going to find new and more constructive ways to incorporate fear into what it is that I'm creating. But that I'm going to recognize that that part of this is, is like there's a choice point. Like this is what I'm choosing to care for. This is what I'm choosing to grow and develop. That's like there's a constructive element to that. I think that it's worth mentioning that I believe, I mean, our, I believe our job, I believe if you're on this call, I believe that, um, you know, if you can be responsive in this moment in time in any capacity, then, you know, we are part of the solution. That's, that, that, that's my orientation to what's happening. And, and so in that, it's continually working in that direction, continually working towards what helps, what helps. And that brings me to the next point. The next point is about action. Right? So we're aligning with ourself, with our deeper truth, what, with what is like most powerful that we can align with 
the highest and best we can align with. We're learning to become objective or be able to see the problem in a way that allows us to think constructively outside the box about it and focus our attention in a way that allows that to continue to happen. You're noticing in that, if I get off track, if I get out of alignment, if I start getting stuck in the problem, okay, repeat, go back to alignment, go back to then thinking constructively, what can I do? Or how can I see this differently? And then what can I do? So taking deliberate action in the world, I want to qualify this right off the bat because you sometimes people will think that they'll stop themselves from action by thinking that their action needs to look like something. I need to be actively helping people. You know, I need to be feeding people in a soup kitchen. I need to um, be, you know, sharing some piece of wisdom. I need to be doing something specific. And that taking action looks like many things. Taking action looks like all the moments that we share a little bit of love and care with each other, uh, with ourselves. It looks like the rest that we're, we give ourselves so that we can continue with the process. It looks like the understanding that we give ourselves and others that we're all under a lot of stress. It looks like many things, but it is moving in the world in a way that is contributing, where our, our thinking and our thinking constructively is important. Our alignment thinking constructively is important, but it's when we move into action, we bring it into the world that we're starting to move the rocks, shift the things that are needing um, uh, shifting that are needing help and support. And so this action place is, is very important. And I encourage, like, like I said, a lot of times people overwhelm themselves with action and then they can become frozen or they minimize the action that they're doing. I am a believer in any little bit. So the drop matters. And to really uh, like support and applaud yourself for whatever drops you're putting in the bucket at this point in time, whatever that looks like, whatever for you. So the fear, um, building on that a little bit, the you know our response is like there's fear in the field right like there's basically um you know we're all we're all we all have been dealing with this this is the this is the the reality of it is that we've all been dealing with high levels of fear and it's like when you know something's going on in a relationship underneath and then there's like a fight that brings it up to the surface and then it's just like oh right you know this is what's been going on it's it's kind of like that there's been a lot of fear that has been present all along and now there's sort of like a you know a mechanism for bringing it up but the, the, it has also intensified, just like in a way when the fight comes out, there's an intensification of the emotion that's associated with what's going on. But the fear can leave us freezing or running or fighting. And I believe that's part of why Aria put this together to help people be able to have the resources to deal with the freezing and the running and the fighting so that they can stabilize and be supported during this time and help support others during this time. Um, so while sometimes our call to action is actually uh, a, um, a call to be still, There'll be moments in all of this, I know I've had quite a few of them, that the call is not to like, you know, raise a banner, it's to, you know, go into solitude, go into contemplation. That, um, that there's a difference of the type of 
um, the movement that is coming from a place of fear and the movement or the action that is coming from a place of, you know, this uh, deliberate action, intelligent action. So you can pay attention to that in the backdrop, like whether I'm like helping or whether I'm not doing anything, let me observe like what the root source of what's going on is. Am I coming from that aligned place or am I coming from a reaction or a connection with the fear of things? Discerning about that inside of ourselves is a cr critical skill as we move through this time. The more that we're able to see that, the more that we're gonna be able to stay on track, the more that we're going to be able to help each other. Um, and, uh, uh, and it's a great skill for, for other situations too. So what I was saying before, I'll say one more time, which is about uh, what it means to contribute at this point in time. And uh, you know, we'll all have everyone and we'll go through phases of, of coping and, uh, and action and reaction to everything that, that is happening. But more importantly than any grand gesture um, is deliberate, regular effort in a positive direction in whatever to whatever level is your is is possible for you at this moment in time that can be large some days and not large others that that continual contribution of what can i do today You know, I wrote down on my daily to-do list. Um, I just, it was like one of those things I have sticky notes on my computer. And I wrote down, pray, check in with people, offer something to help and self-care. I was just like, okay, and all of this, what can I remember to do? You know, in, in order to keep giving to the positive, that's it. Just keep giving to the positive. My actions, giving slowly in the direction of the positive. And my final step here is the um, one that has really lit me up a lot, which is work together. So a lot of people have been talking and I agree that much of what this is about you know, is there's a shifting uh, from a more individual consciousness to more of a unity consciousness. And, and th this makes sense to me. And, and that is part of what I was talking about in the beginning about how can we now orient differently? What are the types of skills and the, the, ways, of, um, the ways of being and the ways of interacting and the ways of working that we can bring online right now in order to, uh, to help? And it's not even that, it's, it's not, it's like, like bring it online to help, but there's a way that that in itself, that expression in itself is too top down. That, that it, it's like, that's not even it. It's like what is coming forward is a different way of working together, a different way of being together. And that the, 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 that egoic I drive is being eroded by the situations. Like if you're in turmoil at this particular point in time, or if you've had turmoil in yourself as you've been going through this, a lot of what is happening for the, the helpers, for the people who are, you know, uh, on kind of like, uh, they're gonna be offering the hand to others, that, that what's happening is, is a lot of refinement. The ego is being disrupted and broken down in whatever way it needs to be so that we can be more uh, present to each other, more 
connected to each other, work more as, as a team, as a web, as a, a like an interrelated web. And so skills around working together are, are important. The primary starting place is just starting to see the interdependence of it all. See your own gifts and see the gifts that someone else is bringing to the table. So it's just starting to shift perspective enough to be able to say, what is this fantastic being that's coming into my orbit? And if it's not in relationship to me, because of whatever reason, what is it in relationship to and how can I insist in that process? So that in a similar way, like if we were all like kind of dancing in a room, switching arms, like linking with each other, we would kind of like why end up being linked with the people that we're like meant to dance with. And to think in that kind of collaborative way about our, 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 our work in the world. It's through the, it's through the multiple voices and the multiple perspective that wisdom is going to shine through. And we've been struggling with this in so many ways, externally looking at our world, we can see how we've been struggling with this. And this is a new, there's like the, it's like there's a new call and there's a new opening actually, in a way, a new opportunity for this interconnectedness to really come online. So in our working together, this is large and small ways of thinking about how we can support each other and how we can uh, be with each other and like how we can uh, help to bring out the best, the most powerful, the most needed, together. I mean, I'll tell you a little bit more about that, that later, but building on that working together, I'm doing a call tomorrow night uh, for people, help orders, heal, healers, guides, ceremonialists, helping them make the changes that they need to in their work right now to really be able to grow in this time. So it's a free call and it's an open call and I'll say a little bit more about it in a bit. Um, but uh, I think that I'll pause here for, for a minute uh, and see if there are any questions about what I've shared. And if you want to help me out, um, sure. If I can have, uh, if you can help me, if there are any questions, or I don't know, Aria, if there's like a way you want people to ask questions, like just to unmute themselves or type it in the chat. Um, and if, 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 great. Anyone? Should I continue? I have a question. Great. Um, I feel like uh, something that I've been working with before this event is, uh, or sort of acknowledging the, um, hmm, how do I put this? I'm thinking about like how you talked about equanimity. Mm -hmm and having sort of a broad objective perspective. And that's something that I have been working on pulling away from because I'm in um, the medical field and often I think that it's overdone and it leaves something to be missed. 
So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you have any advice sounding like this makes sense that now I'm having to lean back into it, um, but on how to lean back into that equanimity while maintaining, like walking a line and maintaining what uh, can be learned from the other side of it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's a it's a, a complex subject in a way, you know, um, uh, because it's uh, something that I think that we grow with over time, like meaning we learn, we try a new approach and we reach the end of that approach and learn a new approach to it. Um, but one of the things that comes forward in this is that remember I was talking about the expanded mind and sort of like the, the muscle mind the you know, the, um, so there's something there like between the relationship between the two. So, uh, the equanimity is a little bit more in the expanded mind and, and that the, and then, but discernment or the ability to like, like even language language is, is distinct. It's separate. You know, in in um, in in medicine, it's this, not that. You know what I mean? Like, it's a different system, right? It's not a gray system. You know, it doesn't say. You know, it's like where you're like, hmm. It's more of a of a like a clear, like almost binary system. It's this or it's that. I'm not saying that there's not any room for gray in there, but I'm just saying that that's like that. It, so recognizing that those are two modes of thinking. And that the modes don't contradict each other, right? They're complementary to each other, and it's about using the right mode at the right time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sure. Um, um, Ariana, and I, I think that there's also one in the chat. Um, That's okay. her. That was hers. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, yeah, there's, there's this real sense I've, I've heard about the collective shadow work that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like there's just this call to tenderness and mm -hmm. the heart space that it, it's almost like our hearts are being birthed into a new phase of, of centering from there. Um, and for me, and I'm sure others, the background of like, the mind does it and this ego energy it's really shifting it's not serving so i wondered if you felt inspired to speak a little bit on um maybe some some tangible ways that we can source ourselves from the heart rather than these old um neurologically programmed modes of being that aren't serving us as much anymore hmm, this is a good question Um, okay, so I think that uh, the, one of the ways to get more to the heart is through the body. Mm. So um, by, you know, and again, part of what Aria has put together during this time is, is some of that, helping people understand how to work more with their body during this time. So if, if you... Uh, move or if you do any kind of somatic work or if you start to like uh, learn to express through through your body like through core energetics or something like that then that's going to help you come out of sort of like the the that smaller mind I was talking about and and move more into a place of like embodied presence then there's more connectedness to the heart from from that place mm -hmm. there's also probably for people who are really stuck in the mind there's tools that you can use in the mind to help with the the stepping out of the mind which are things like their questions that provide perspective mm -hmm. so it might be you know like what is the driver in this situation? What's motivating me in this moment? Where do I feel that motivation is coming from? Right? Like, so that like is a question. So it's of the mind. 
it, but it allows the mind to look at itself a little bit more. And then you can start to bring up sort of like an inner lie detector, which is usually in the body, that you can bring up an inner lie detector about it. Like, um, all right, there is something off here, or I can see something that might be happening here. That, that then uh, like allows you to say, okay, again, the mind can also use the tool of where are examples of an alternative? Where have I witnessed an alternative that I might be able to bring in? So now where this gets a little bit tricky is that when the ego is in full operation, it really likes to convince us that we're like doing it. So we replicate a behavior without necessarily having the deeper connection to it. And so, so in that way, and then it's like, that's where I can say, well, my, my words are perfect. My words are polished, but what's behind my words is not, you know? So, so the, the um, so that is like, that's a trick in, in the process. So we're ruthless in a way in, in being willing to feel into ourselves. Like the ruthlessness, it's not like a cruelty. The ruthlessness is like when we look at the gods and goddesses of the world is that willingness to really look inside and feel into like, is this truth? You know, is this like, right? Am I coming from a deeper place or not? And so when we put that, when we like turn that, like that force into like discernment inside of ourselves, it, it, it's not a, like an instantaneous process. What it is, is as a process where we like keep clicking in more and more to that, um, so to that deeper truth, that, that, that heart space. Mm -hmm. One more thing. Um, Aria brought it up in the beginning, uh, which people talk about all the time, gratitude and love. Mm -hmm. So you want to know your heart, find gratitude, mm -hmm. find love for something, and you feel your heart expand. And when you get a read on what it feels like to have an expanded heart, then you can start to see how expanded your heart is in other things that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a it, right, great, awesome. Okay, so um, thank you for the questions. I love questions. And um, before I switch back over to or, um, Aria, uh, I just, my, my suggestion is that as you move forward, that you take a look at uh, how much of your energy intention is moving in the direction of these four points. Mm -hmm. And then when you get off track, meaning if you feel disrupted and you're not feeling so good, then you can re like reapproach like so, so from the start, like what would it take for me to come into alignment? Or uh, what would it take to bring myself into more, like, uh, like what would be an action that I can take in order to bring myself into a deeper harmony with myself? Um, or how do I need to care for myself in this moment? And whatever it is that you kind of go back through them and see if there's a starting point in one of these points, often it is alignment, it's a great place to start but that there's, there's uh, a, um, a return to them. And then it becomes a very simple tool. So a simple, easy tool for, for helping to stay on track while moving through everything else. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, uh, it's my, you know, it's my hope that what comes out of this moment or of any challenging moment that we individually or collectively face is that we learn uh, more about our own uh, beauty, our own greatness, our own love, uh, more about what we have to offer, that we come into deeper alignment with what is uh, true uh, and good. Um, 
and uh, and the beauty of what we get in this life is to be able to share that with each other. And so thank you. Thank you for, for being here. Um, thank you for being you. And um, thank you for, for continuing to share in this experience. And thank you, Aria, for hosting me. Thank you so much, Kate. Really um, very rich and uh, beautiful questions as well. Um, really feeling all of your hearts and the, the wisdom that each of us has, um, all that we're uh, deliberately taking, taking action on as we come into alignment, as we're working together, as we're finding those new ways to, to think constructively about what needs to be created right now. So deep gratitude as we rise in resiliency together. I have a couple announcements and thank yous um, to share. Um, uh, we'll maybe go like two minutes over, but if you guys want to hang out and, and hear about uh, kind of what's what's coming up next. Um, as Kate mentioned, her webinar tomorrow is going to be, I have no doubt, um, very useful as this was. Um, bring uh, your questions. I understand it's kind of an open question format, Kate. Kate Kind of yeah, direct. I have heard for, direct for people that are on people on how they can pivot in their in their work. Great. Yeah. So a little bit more kind of like one-on-one -on -one focus. Mm -hmm. um, so highly recommend that if if um, if that's not your uh, field, you, you know somebody who's in that line of work, then definitely share it. Um, these resources will go out, and I believe you're also available, Kate, for one-on-one um, -on -one support if. Folks are looking yeah, for that I'm going to well offer some one-on-one -on -one session sliding scale for people. So you can email admin at katesigner.com. I'll type it into the chat um, if you're interested, and, and we'll get you information on what that looks like. And I'm doing that as well. Um, so maybe, um, Magdalena, could you throw my email in the chat to... Um, and then on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern, our dear friend Orion is going to talk about how we sir thrive in stillness and solitude. How do we deal with all this stillness and solitude that we're finding ourselves in right now? Um, and then on Friday evening at 8 p.m., I'm going to have an open community sharing circle. So just holding space for us to come together in um, sharing. Um, each person will have a chance to uh, speak, share a little bit about what's on your heart and mind at this time. Um, and then Yana D, uh, Bare Earth Herbals, and Yoga Bel Air are also having their own um, private sharing circles that I'll be facilitating um, during the day on Friday. So if you came in through one of those organizations, if you found your way here because you love um, the herbs that Bear Earth makes or Yana D's clothes or you're part of the Yoga Bel Air community, then um, uh, you're welcome to join those, those, you know, kind of smaller, more private groups um, for sharing on this coming Friday. We have um, next Monday at the same time slot, creativity and equity for resilient communities with dear, dear brother, Seth Bernard, who's a musician here in Northern Michigan where I live. And, um, and then on Wednesday, uh, my mentor Emily is gonna be sharing about ancestral healing for the, the panic that we can sometimes feel collectively during pandemics and how that's linked in with our ancestors. Um, so those are next week's events, and those sh same sharing circles are going to happen on Friday mm, for the next three weeks. And then we'll have on, uh, on Monday, the 6th of April, an amazing sound bath with Monique. Um, she's an incredible um, uh, healer working with sound. And, um, and then our own uh, Lily Wolf, also here in Northern Michigan, where I'm located currently, um, cultivating somatic awareness, working with the body during this time, working with our nervous system. So that's what we have coming up in the next three weeks. You're invited to, um, that's kind of the sneak peek preview. They're gonna, those events are gonna be released uh, as they come and you'll all be on the email list. So you'll have the announcements and the signups for those. If you want to join, if you want to share them, um, 
And it, you know, depending on, on what's happening three weeks from now, this series may, may be extended. We'll, we'll see where everything is at in the world then and, and what is um, present for everyone then. Um, so um, really the intention was for us to all have kind of an anchor point of coming together, this kind of Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. And I want to give a shout out also to some of the um, organizations local to Northern Michigan that are supporting with spreading the word about this. I mentioned um, the ethically made, um, environmentally friendly, super cozy clothes that Yana D makes. Um, and, uh, and also Bare Earth Herbals providing medicine, herbal medicine. Some of it is wild harvested um, during this time to support um, also uh, offering herbal consults, one-on-one -on -one sessions with an intuitive herbalist, Sierra, the founder of that company. Amazing, beautiful work. Um, we've got um, Title Track, um, when assess organizations, they're currently fundraising for our indigenous elders in this region um, to have the support and resources that they need at this time and supporting the, those wisdom keepers in that way. And then um, uh, Bali Imports um, uh, is uh, an, an online shop offering um, inspired, inspired living um, goods and um, uh, little gifts if you want to send something to someone to cheer them up at this time. Um, and then our, our three local uh, yoga and fitness centers, Yoga Bel Air, I mentioned, um, Willoway Spa, um, offering online fitness classes, and also um, uh, the um, Inspired Living Yoga Studio as well, offering online classes. So a lot of great resources. Um, again, this energy of coming together, of thriving through this, and um, uh, finding our own resiliency uh, in, in new ways together. So thank you, everyone. Mm, I um, will officially close us here. Big love your way. So much gratitude and love. Thank you, thank you. Mm.